Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. 7,000 views. That has been how long it has taken me to actually record the video that you are watching right now. A short while ago, at least I feel, I actually created a series of videos that walked people through the pressing process from start to finish. And it was basically a three-part uh, video series. Part one was the tools and resources. Parts two and three were basically the process, the results, that kind of thing. And then part four was basically a Q&A that kind of explained things uh, that I may have understated or not fully explained in the parts one through three. And so I honestly should have started with this video, but there are reasons why I didn't. But now it is here. In this video, I am going to show you my process for actually cleaning comics. And the reason that I said I should have done it in a different order is because you always want to clean a comic before you actually press it. But the, the horse was out of the barn and down the road, and so now we are trying to play catch up 7,000 views later. And so if you were one of those people that watched those previous videos, I definitely want to, uh, to thank you for taking the time to watch those, gave me the inspiration and motivation that I needed to finally complete this video. So what you're gonna see here is, again, my process for actually cleaning modern comics and some older comics. And I'm gonna walk you through the tools and resources that I use, the process. I'm going to show you tips and techniques. I'm going to show you some, some do's and some don'ts. I'm going to show you some examples of, of books that I've actually cleaned. And, and what I did in this video was I actually show you me actually cleaning a comic. And I will show you the improvement that can be made in just a couple of moments with a little bit of work. And so I didn't fast forward the video. I didn't speed it up. I didn't, you know, edit it down and that kind of stuff. I kind of left parts of it so that you can actually see how much time it takes to improve uh, the appearance of a book. And so in some places, uh, the, the footage isn't the best, but, but bear with me because I think you'll actually be able to see essentially before and after. So uh, one last caveat before I get to the video, I just want to remind you guys that I am not a professional when it comes to cleaning and pressing comics. I am a guy with some comics that is trying to save some money by cleaning and pressing his own books. Now, with that said, I have been able to get some pretty good results, but like with anything, people are going to have different ways of doing the same thing, different approaches. And so what you're going to have to figure out is what do you wanna keep from the process that I show you? And you know what do you wanna discard? And so with that caveat out of the way, Let's get to the video. So I've gone ahead and set out some materials here that we are going to use for this video. And we have some materials that are here for the purpose of cleaning comics. And then we have off to the side some comics that we're actually going to use for this demonstration. And we're going to clean some modern comics. We're going to clean some older comics. We're going to talk a little bit about technique and some do's and don'ts and things like that in just a couple of moments. But first, I want to walk you through the materials that I have here assembled. And some of these materials you've actually seen in previous videos, specifically in my pressing videos. So I have some illustration paper here. And I really just use the illustration paper to give me a clean work surface to work off of. Um, and it can be any kind of paper or something that you put down to basically, you know, protect the comic a little bit, give you a clean work environment. And I just use the illustration paper because I use it in other parts of this whole process of cleaning and pressing comics. So it just came in really handy for that. Just about every comic book collector actually has these, the, the backing boards, and I just happen to have the BCW backing boards here that I'll use, and I'll show you exactly how I use those in just a couple of moments. The other thing that I keep handy, and I use this in the throughout the process, these are actually some cleaning cloths uh, that uh, were for my children. They're, they're washcloths, and I actually use these things a lot here in the comic book room. And they are just small microfiber, kind of non-abrasive type of uh, cleaning wipes or uh, cloths. And I, I wash them, of course, periodically, but I'll show you exactly how I use this in just a couple of moments. And then the big thing that we have here are these. Uh, these are the Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. These things are pretty awesome, I think, because 
I use them to clean comics. And there are people that have variety, a variety of techniques that they actually employ to actually clean com- comics. For me, it made sense to go with the Magic Eraser. I had the epiphany one day, tested it out on a couple of comics, and lo and behold, it actually worked quite nicely. And so uh, we're going to actually demonstrate how we use these things in just a couple of moments. So you can see here, this is actually uh, what the Magic Eraser looks like. This is a, a brand new one right out of the package that you just saw. And here is uh, just an older one that I use. And, and I'll explain why this one is all decrepit looking in just a couple of moments. But you can see that there is definitely a color difference. This one is bright white and this one is a little dingy. And again, I'll kind of explain some of that as we go through the process here. All right, so let me go ahead and get things set up here so we can actually start walking through some, some examples. All right, so one of the first things that we want to do is to take a look at a modern comic, and that's essentially what this is here. And what I'll also point out to you is that I'm not wearing gloves, and I don't wear gloves when I clean comics. I, I periodically will wash my hands, uh, but first, one of the other things I do is also clean my work surface here and, of course, wash my hands. Uh, but I don't wear gloves. It's not my thing. Uh, if you feel like you should wear gloves, I definitely want to encourage you to do so, but you won't see that here uh, because I don't wear them uh, behind the scenes and I'm certainly not going to put them on for the purpose of a video. I'm going to do to some degree or another essentially what I do normally, right? Um, and if you guys have seen my haul videos, you know uh, that the results that I'm able to get from the comics are, are, are pretty solid from this process. So this is a, a modern comic this is absolute carnage. And uh, what I had my wife do was to give me a really nice fingerprint <laughs> right in the middle of this comic. And we're going to see whether we can actually see that here on camera in just a second. Yep. So I think you're able to actually see that fingerprint right up in this area right here. And what I want to do is actually show you how I would clean that off because with the modern comic, one of the things that you're probably going to encounter is not dirt on, on a comic per se. It's not debris on a comic like you might get on one of these comics that may or may not have been bagged and boarded in various points in its life. With a modern comic, you're probably going to get it off the shelf and it, it probably is going to be a comic that has been handled a little bit by people who weren't uh, always careful about what they were doing and put a big thumbprint right in the middle of this thing. And so one of the things that I do for a modern comic, and, and for other comics for that matter, is I grab this cloth and I give it a little wipe. And probably I'm shaking my camera, so I'm shake a, or wipe a little more gently here. But what I'll do is I'll just grab one of these, this cloth, and I will give uh, the comic a little bit of a, a nice wipe here. And what we will probably see as we look closer at this comic is that that fingerprint is no longer there. Actually, I can still see it. <laughs> so we're gonna clean that a little bit more to uh, improve the appearance of that spot right there. And this is uh, one of the things that you'll learn about cleaning comics is that you have to take your time. This is uh, not necessarily something that can be rushed. It is a, a process of uh, sometimes trial and error. It is a, a process of taking your time to do something, checking, and uh, sometimes rechecking that thing to improve uh, the overall appearance of the book. So we'll see whether I was able to remove that this time. Yep, so we were successful. So a lot of people have asked the question, Reggie, how do I go about cleaning a comic book? There you go. That's an example of how you can clean a modern comic super quick. It's nothing more than a simple cloth, microfiber, 
and a little bit of wiping action is really all that you need. And sometimes for a modern comic, that's literally the only thing that you will have to do is to wipe it down before you press it if you decide that you actually do need to press it. And as you probably saw in the um, the up close, there's definitely some waviness on this cover. While some of that may actually be allowable by CGC because it's a, a known defect, if you will, of the comic, I prefer to take a couple of moments and actually just to do a quick press on this comic to make it look as perfect as it can possibly be. Uh, but again, a wipe, quick press, this comic is ready ready to be sent in for grading. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, this book is, is a little defective. It has you know, some severe, severe bindery tears up here and a couple of other defects, which is why I'm using it for the purpose of this illustration. And we're probably going to, uh, to do a couple of other things to this book in just a couple of moments. So um, it probably will not be leaving this collection at all. So we'll go ahead and set that book to the side. And I want to go ahead and take a look at another book here. This is a, uh, a Star Wars number 28 here. And this is a book that I literally pulled from one of the bins down at my ankle here. Uh, it's one of the books that just kind of sits in a bin. It doesn't really have a real purpose. But what you'll notice here in the, the lettering here of Star Wars, there's actually some dirt and debris heavily here. What I want to try to do is to try to uh, improve the appearance of this comic just a little bit. You can see on the back side, that there's definitely some things that are going on back there as well. See if I can get a little close up here for you guys to be able to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So the thing about cleaning comics is that there are some things that you're able to remove and there are some things that you're not going to be able to remove. And you really won't know the difference between those things until you actually start to to work on something. And that's when you you realize that if you're going to be able to improve the appearance of it or not. But the same way that I did with the modern comic, one of the things that I always do is to give the comic a couple of wipes with just the regular cloth because the cloth is able to actually remove some some dirt, some debris. Um, there is a little bit of a abrasiveness to it, right, because there's some friction that's going on here. But it's just a way to kind of remove uh, some of the, the dirt and the debris from the comic itself without having to use the magic eraser. And if you actually use like a white cloth or something like that, you'll actually sometimes see some of that uh, dirt and debris actually accumulate on the rag that you're using. So. All right, so we're going to spend a little bit of time on this front part here. And um, part of the reason why you see this part of the magic eraser kind of eaten away is because this is the edge where I'll actually pinch pieces of it and work in tight crevices or I'll actually break pieces off. And I'll actually use my finger with a little bit of the magic eraser on the tip to work in some of these areas. Because what you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to work an area with the magic eraser that doesn't need to be cleaned. And so you want to try to focus your efforts exactly where you need it to go. But one of the things that I will do for certain comics, especially older comics, is I will give them a little bit of a once over with the magic eraser. Because again, this is this is a comic that has been exposed to elements and I like to give it a little bit of uh, a once over, if you will, very, very gently to remove again, some of the dirt and debris that was not removed with the cloth. And you definitely want to be careful when you're doing this because anytime you're using something abrasive on a comic, whether it be an eraser like a lot of people use, uh, the gum erasers, or you're using a magic eraser, you have the ability to remove color. And you see a little bit of that here on this magic eraser where it's changing colors just a little bit versus this one. But I've probably cleaned, you know, I don't know, 80 comics with this one. Um, and so... If, if that's what it looks like after 80 comics, then that's not too bad. You're not seeing a whole lot of color transfer uh, off of the comics onto the magic eraser. So that just kind of gives you some example. So let me, uh, I'm going to move the mic here and I'm going to try to work a little bit in this area and see if we can improve the overall appearance of what it is that we're seeing here. 
And what I'll show you here is what I will do with this, this backing board. I'll actually use this backing board to kind of cover up parts of the comic that are not being worked on to prevent my hands uh, from from you know touching parts of the comic unnecessarily so i'll use this to kind of rest my hand on to also hold the book in place as i as i work on it so bear with me here All right, so let's see if we made some improvement there. And you can probably you can probably see there that there was a lot of crud here around the R. So I basically worked on the A, the R, the R, the S. There was definitely some crud that was happening on all four of these letters. You can probably see that there is some improvement. You can see that over here, there is still definitely some crud in the letters, but over here, it, there is definitely some improvement. And so one of the things that I like to do is when I do it, I like to make sure that I give you know things a, a nice little wipe down. I like to find some good light to be able to look at this carefully to see whether there has been an improvement. And uh, hopefully, if you rewind, <laughs> You can actually see that there has been a marked improvement in this area in just a couple of moments, just a couple of moments of work, uh, carefully rubbing, you know, applying a little bit of pressure. Um, you can see that there is an improvement in the appearance of of those letters. So again, that's a, I think a, a, just a, an example of just how quickly you can actually improve the overall appearance. And so what I'll show you on the backside here, 
hopefully you'll be able to see this and, and maybe we can actually show some improvement here. You'll notice here there's some debris here, right? Some dirt and things like that. So I'll place it on the comic here. What I'll, or the board, and what I'll use is the backing board to basically cover up the section of the comic that is not being worked on, the areas that basically have some color to them. I wanna to try to protect them to prevent the magic eraser from removing color from an area that has color. And in this white area, because I have it kind of sandwiched and protected, I'm actually gonna just rub this back and forth a little bit. And you can probably hear uh, the noises that are being made. It's actually perfectly fine. I'm applying a little bit of pressure here as I do it. And you can see the pieces of the magic eraser kind of breaking off. What I'll tell you is that I, I tend to wear a mask when I'm actually working with the magic eraser because there, there is some debris that breaks off and it's pretty fine in terms of the particle size. And I prefer to, uh, to just protect my airways. And so I will use a mask but because I am trying to do this voiceover for you guys, I don't have a mask on. Um, but again, I'm just slowly kind of applying a little bit of even pressure here to this area to try to improve the overall appearance of it. And I'll show you what it looks like in just a couple of moments. And hopefully we'll be able to see that there's been some improvement. But this is one of the things with um, cleaning comics. It is, it takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of work. But what you can do with a little bit of focus is actually pretty spectacular, I think. So if you look there, that area is much cleaner than it was before. And, and I would certainly spend uh, a lot more time on that area if... Uh, if this was a book that I was actually going to submit, I'm gonna to try to work here. See if we can improve that just a little bit as well. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll sometimes, you know, kind of work my way around a comic. I won't spend all of my time focused just on one particular area. Kind of move it around a little bit and uh, just try to uh, improve the overall appearance a little bit at a time instead of just focusing solely on one area. One of the things that um, I was very fearful of early on was actually damaging a comic. And uh, I would work on a lot of really, you know, worthless comics, air quote, worthless comics that were pretty damaged just to kind of get the confidence that I needed to work on some things that were a little more expensive. And, um, you know, I, I would definitely recommend that for people. Take your time. Don't rush into an expensive comic. Take your time working on something that is not expensive. <laughs> something where you can kind of get a feel for how much pressure you can apply before you, you know, potentially will damage a comic by um, removing too much of its glossy cover. And so that's why I try to take it really slow, little by little. I'll work in an area, I'll work, go to another area, and then I'll come back and just kind of look at it as overall and see whether I can, you know, continue to make little minor modifications and improvements. And you can see here, you can see here, this area is, is very different than it looked just a couple of moments ago. Little, little bit of work, little bit of work goes a long way. And so there you go. That's a, another little uh, technique there. Hopefully that, that helps. And uh, I'll show you a little more here with this comic. And what I'll do, as you can see, there's a lot of white space on this comic. And the Magic Eraser works great for that. So again, what I'll do is I'll you know, start off with giving a little bit of a wipe here. And then go a little bit to the overall comic to kind of give it a little bit of a rub down. right? And see how I'll even show you here. This is a clean Magic Eraser. No color transfer, right? That's still as white as it was just a couple of moments ago. So it just goes to show you that you can, you know, use something like this and not damage that book at all. Book still looks 
the same. Still a nice amount of gloss on that book. Didn't damage it. But what I'll do is I'll basically break off pieces of the magic eraser and I'll use it on my finger to work into some of these smaller areas. And again, it's the same principle with the larger brick, just, you know, on the finger, just allows you to kind of work your way into some of these smaller little crevices, some of these nooks and crannies to, you know, improve the appearance. And again, what I should do is, of course, have <laughs> my backing board there in place to kind of rest my hand on. But again, we're uh, recording a video here, so focus is a little diverted, but I uh, would just work this thing through those areas. And eventually this thing is just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as it continues to break down. And there's little, you know, debris all over my hands. But that's just another way to kind of uh, work one of these comics. Yeah. So one of the things I'll tell you is that an older comic is much more durable, I think, than sometimes a modern comic. You can you can rub this thing a little bit and, uh, you know, not damage it, not, not mess the comic up. Uh, but sometimes when you have one of these modern comics, the question becomes like how much pressure is too much pressure. So I'll kind of demonstrate, if you rub that, look at that, see that? See how quickly that rubbed off? We'll bring on this comic over here, see whether that happens. A little bit of transfer, nothing like that. Now you can see it, see? Just a little bit of, there's a difference in the inks that were used back then versus now. Didn't apply all that much pressure to this one, but definitely burned through the gloss, burned through the ink. This one required a little bit more work to actually do it. And so that's just, I just wanted you to see what would happen <laughs> if you applied too much pressure to a, to one of these comics. And again, when I'm doing a modern comic, oftentimes this is all that I will use. Anything more than that, you will potentially have that kind of damage, especially if you're using the magic eraser. Even if you're using it very, very gently, you have the potential to do exactly what it is that we see right there. So that's definitely something to be avoided. Um, but again, you can see here, same kind of effect, just not as damaging to the comic as what we're we're seeing right there. Uh, another thing that I'll tell you with, with these older comics, you can definitely uh, you work them. You can work them more than what you can do with the modern comic. But you definitely want to be careful to not uh, work an area too heavily for too long because you can actually burn through the gloss. There's a gloss coating on the comics that give the, the book a little bit of a shine and sheen when you catch it in the light. And, and one of the ways that you can mess a comic up, an older comic, is by working it a lot. And you'll actually burn through that. And so when you are kind of catching the comic in the light to see how the light is reflecting off of the comic, the same way that we kind of showed in the cleaning video, what you'll see is you'll hit a dull spot. And in that dull spot, that is because you rub the comic aggressively. And you might not actually remove the color like I did here because you could be working in a white spot, in a white area, and you can actually remove the gloss from the comic. So you definitely wanna be very careful about how much pressure you apply how heavy you work an area. And it's part of the reason why I'll, I'll work an area, I'll turn it, I'll work on another area, I'll take the comic away and I'll go to an area where there's a lot of light and I'll kind of angle it to see, to make sure that um, that the comic is, the, the appearance of the comic is improving, but I'm not damaging the comic. And, and so there's also a point where there are going to be stains and things like that that you cannot remove from a comic. You just, you you if you rub it anymore, uh, if you if you work it anymore, you are going to damage that comic. And so you definitely want to um, pay attention to how much pressure you're applying to the comic and um, and the how much improvement in the appearance that you're getting, because sometimes you can remove several layers of, of dirt and debris and um, and there's still la layers there. There are certain stains that can't be removed and sometimes you just have to call it quits and you just have to walk away from it and good is good enough in some cases. But as you saw here with this comic, this was an area that was was pretty bad. We worked it and we, we definitely improved the appearance and same thing back here. We improved both the top and the bottom of this comic. So one of the things I, I wanna show you here is a comic that I actually picked up. I wanna actually maybe show you guys some of these images uh, on screen, but this is a comic that I actually picked up from from someone a couple of months ago, and this is a comic that I actually cleaned. And uh, this this comic was pretty dingy. 
there, but there, as you can see, there are some stains like over here where the B is in brother that I was not able to uh, remove. But I definitely was able to improve the overall appearance of this comic. Uh, the backside of this thing was really, really bad. Um, there was a, a number up here, I think, of like 35 cents or something like that. I was able to improve the overall appearance of this comic dramatically. There are, as I mentioned before, there are some stains and things like that that you cannot remove. This stain actually runs through uh, the entire book, runs through the entire book. Um, that and there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, I, I lightened it a little, uh, but there's just some some damage that cannot be improved, at least by my techniques. Maybe uh, someone who has some skill beyond mine can actually improve it even more so. Uh, but again, you know, I'm not an, an expert, not a pro, um, and and so there is a point at which I will just stop because, for fear of of damaging a comic. You know, like we demonstrated here on purpose, I never want to do that. And uh, I've actually never actually damaged one of my own comics uh, accidentally. I've done it on purpose, <laughs> but never, never accidentally. So there you go. That's a, the, a little bit of a video. I may try to, if I can, throw up some examples uh, similar to this one on screen of other books that I have actually worked on to kind of show you guys some examples of some of the work. But I hope that you found uh, this portion of the video helpful. So there you have it. That's my process for cleaning comics. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so at Reggie Collects on Instagram. Take care.